views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready to experience the truth. Welcome to Truth Talk Radio with your host, Deb Acker. Truth Talk Radio is the hit show that will illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. Unleash your intuitive nature while Deb helps you stop looking outside yourself for value and happiness, break through patterns, and move into your authentic truth at lightning speed. Truth Talk Radio will leave you feeling lighter, help you live with more presence, passion, and clarity, and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Now, here's your host, Deb Acker. Hello, everyone. I'm Deb Acker, and you are listening to Truth Talk on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with me for the next hour as I help you experience the truth, nothing but the truth. Each week on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, I'll have some of the most gifted, inspiring, and unique souls, speakers, and authors helping to move you into more light, love, and, of course, truth. And before we get started, I'd like to start out today's show with an intention. And my intention for today's show and every show is that everyone that needs to hear this conversation hears it and that you leave feeling expansive, inspired, lit up, and ready to take massive action. And with that, I'd like to introduce today's guest, Kristen Russell. Kristen has been a life and soul coach for 10 years, helping people access, heal, and express their soul potential. She's been through breakups, divorce, and relationship chaos um, that's inspired her to intense introspection, spiritual seeking, and personal growth. She helps clients embrace their inner wisdom and unconditional love so they, they can create more loving relationships with themselves and others. Her works help create alchemy, expansion, and evolution with EFT tapping and metrotronia therapy. Um, and my experience with Kristen was that of a warm, kind soul. So with that, I'd like to welcome her to the show. Welcome. How are you? I'm great, Deb. Thanks so much for having me as, as I'm listening to your introduction of your show and kind of the work that you're doing. I, I do feel such a kindred spirit with you. Um, it, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. No, I felt totally connected to you. That's how I usually pick my guests through intuition. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Uh, tell, us, tell us about your journey. How did you get started um, on this path? Okay. Well, you know, I, I like many of us, <laughs> went through a little bit of chaos. I mean, I've always been a spiritual seeker to some degree or, an, or another. Um, but in the end of 2003, I had some uh, personal events, including a divorce and, and lots of kind of chaos around that, that really sent me evaluating my life, my work, my um, my personal relationships, and my own, like, lack of fulfillment that um, it just felt like something was missing. And I know so many people relate to that at some point in their life. Like, is this it? <laughs> is this it? There has to be more than this. And, and in uh, my typical maybe Scorpio fashion, I went uh, really deep and really intense, uh, kind of studying with so many different people, so many teachers and retreats and, you know, even traveling halfway around the world to, to see healers and really just adventuring and, and, and being curious about, uh, what what life had to offer and what I had to offer. I knew that I had more to offer than I was really fulfilling in that time. And so, um, you know, kind of quite the, the journey. And in more recent years, I, I have a son now uh, who's four and a half and I'm married. And um, my life has settled down from all of that really intense uh, seeking. But for those first few years, um, it really sent me on a lot of exploration outside of myself, really. And what I've learned and, and what you know is uh, it is all within us. And yet what I've learned more, I don't know if it's more recently, but um, the value of relationships and how relationships can help point the way and help us uncover those deeper layers that um, isn't so easy to do when we're alone. Like there was a time I remember where I was single after my divorce and I remember living in this house and I was just meditating and studying and I was feeling so enlightened. <laughs> it's amazing how you can do that when you're alone and not in a relationship. 
<laughs> and so, you know, the gift of relationship with, you know, is bringing up a lot of stuff. It's not, that's not just the gift of it, but that was one where, um, as I reengaged with being in more intimate relationship, um, I was able to uh, kind of uncover stuff that really lay dormant when I was um, single. Um, and I'm not saying you have to be in relationship in order to, but we're all in relationships. I mean, that's the thing about it is we're all in relationship, um, whether it be, you know, people that we work with, with you and me in this moment, uh, and the listeners and their energy, and um, or or it even be our dog. I saw, I have, this isn't too off, off subject, <laughs> but I saw, you know, you were at a wolf sanctuary just recently, and it, it re- made me think of I'm kind of going through this experience with my dog who's part wolf and an amazing being in herself and she's 13 and a half and she's um, getting ready to transition and um, just the relationship of that um, brings up new layers. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, in the gift of the wolf sanctuary, one of the big pieces was the, um, that like, Wolves are such in the, you know, such in their being, like they're so in their essence and they're so in their inner beauty and just like not having to work hard to just be so just powerful and so profound. And it was just a really, really beautiful um, experience. And in one of the pictures that I took, like to have that trust to bring the, you know, I took a wolf selfie, which is totally the prime example of humaning. (laughs) I'm getting a selfie here. I could feel like how I kept hearing that I had that inner voice going, like when I couldn't get a good one, it was like, keep going. And so I just kept hearing, like my intuition kept saying, no, you need, like, keep going. Well, you're going to get a good picture. And I was like, okay, which I normally don't hear that when I'm taking selfies. I just take one and I'm done. But (laughs) I was like, I'm going to follow that. And at one point, like, my hand went underneath the wolf's chin, like, by um, the ear on the other side. And, like, I like I brought his fur, like, close close to me. And that was, like, at the moment that I got that perfect picture or that, you know, good picture. And it was one of those things where um, that, uh, that touch, that sensory experience, I will have that experience forever. Like, that, that feeling of having that closeness with um, – with an animal that, you know, um, could be wild or, or, you know, could be quote unquote dangerous. Um, and just to, to have that trust of bringing that animal close to me and then just like have it just, it just felt like such a beautiful, deep connection, a, um, a beautiful, deep, like connected, um, type of relationship. So yeah, that was, to- it was totally powerful and, um, and beautiful. So you mentioned yeah. around, um, you mentioned around, like around relationships and really them helping to access the information within. What does that look like for you? You know, obviously they're bringing up the triggers, but what what does that look for look like for you? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways it can it can come up. I mean, triggers, and I'll talk about that more in just a second. I mean, that's certainly part of it. And there's also this um, on the side of it. There's also this activation that's happening, which is what you're even talking about with this wolf. Like we activate each other when we fully come into contact in an open hearted space. Like we, we are activating things within ourselves that we don't do alone in the same way. Um, I'm not saying we can't, but there's something really special about coming together in relationship with uh, an open heart and a common and and like you set the intention for the show, I love that. As far as, you know, how we deal or how I help clients deal with triggers and how to unveil more of their soul self through that process, there's, there's a couple of different, I mean, there's no magic formula, but certainly recognizing the emotions because So many times we can just kind of sweep them under the rug, or at least that's what I used to do, (laughs) sweep them under the rug, and all of this unconscious stuff just stays dormant. But these triggers, when they happen, they're they're gifts to look at, oh, there's unconsciousness there that is uh, separating us still. So what is that? Being curious about what is that? What am I really upset about? Because it's not usually what we think it is. You know, we're conditioned to either, um, you know, shame ourselves for something or blame someone else for that trigger. But um, but being curious about what what's really, what am I really upset about goes a long, long way. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I really think, too, with those triggers, it's like, you know, we have a tendency to kind of frame those as bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead of instead of framing them as bad, just framing them as an opportunity to see more of you, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity for us to really, really expand and to go into it and, and look at what it's what it's there to show you. Um, look at what what it's there to you know to meant to, to help you um, see more of. So that um, that is so so super cool. So we are going to take a quick break here. You are listening to Truth Talk. I am your host Deb Acker. Um, when we come back, we are going to explore more with Kristen. So stay tuned. We will be right back. <laughs> Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Patshow.com for listening times in your area. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. The Doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Try to see it my way Do I have to keep on talking till I can go on? While you see it your way Run the risk of knowing we're back on Truth Talk. I am your host, Deb Acker. My guest today is Kristen Russell, and we are exploring our relationships, the gateway to our soul. Uh, before we continue, Kristen, can you give everyone your contact info, please? Sure. You can find me at www.illuminatedcoaching.com, I-L-L-U-M-I-N-A-T-E-D, coaching.com. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, before right. the break, <laughs> before the break, we were talking about triggers, and actually, when we were on break, I want you to share with me what you were talking about with how triggers can actually 
how, how you kind of uh, shifted how most people think about triggers into something that's actually good. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, it's funny because um, I was just telling Deb that, you know, most oftentimes, or at least I know that I did in the past, you know, we get this emotional trigger and it's like, oh, no, either stuff it under the rug or it's going to consume me in some way. And now it's really interesting because where I'm at in this journey is that when I have some kind of real emotional trigger, I actually have the capacity to get excited about it because I know that within that is something I haven't yet fully explored. There's some part of me that is, um, still unconscious, that is still um, resisting in some way. So uh, as I am able to experience these deeper, I was saying specifically I had an experience recently where I experienced a lot of grief that I hadn't realized that was there, and that's interesting, more is coming up now as uh, my dog is getting ready to transition so there's something here about this grief, and grief can be pretty tricky. It can be quite a consuming emotion as I've experienced in the past with the loss of my mom. And there's a space now where we can experience the grief or whatever emotion it is and yet not get consumed by it. So we're experiencing it with our emotional body and our mental body, and we're able to process it through those ways. And yet there's the expanded version of myself as a soul that has the awareness of what's happening and can stand in a place of curiosity. Like, what? what is this? What am I really afraid of? What am I really feeling loss about? Uh, and then when we start to kind of un unpeel those layers and unpeel that stuff, it creates so much freedom of energy to flow through us so that we can embody more of that expanded version of ourselves without blocking that with our conditioning and with our emotions. Yeah. Well, and you're talking about emotions and it's like, I mean, it's perfect, right? It's like, can we be curious about our emotions without judging them? Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, because, I mean, our emotions are there for us. They're there to really help us, to help us expand. And, um, you know, we we can say, like, when we're crying or when we're, when we're feeling grief, that's, we can put it in the box of bad. And, obviously, the pain of losing someone is really, really hard. Um, and we can use it as an opportunity to expand and refocus ourselves, especially during that grief, and say, um, what did I learn from, you know, for instance, what did I learn from this person's passing? What did, you know, how did this, how did this person transitioning help me expand? How did, you know, how did I grow from this experience? Um, and I mean, I speak, I come from firsthand experience because my mother, you know, when I was 17 passed away. And so it was a whole reshifting and reframing and, you know, and the, the deep depths of grief and, you know, emotional loss and like, you know, the loss of, of, um, of, you know, my, one of my parental figures who was, who was, I was extremely close to, um, all of that is, it was, it was there for me to serve and support me and obviously was not easy or wasn't, I wasn't really able to see that in that exact moment. But as I've gone through the journey and, and open to more, I see that that, that, that was exactly what it was there for. Um, so that actually brings me to a question. It's how do we face and embrace our emotions without being identified with them? Yeah, well, that really relates to having the discernment and the awareness of who we really are. We aren't our emotions. We aren't um, our thoughts, right? They're experiences that we're having. But so many times we can get consumed by these emotions because we think that I am sad, right? Even in our languaging, I am sad. I am mad. You know, no, you're feeling that way. Those are emotional experiences that we're feeling. It's not who we are. And when we can remember that we are more than our emotional bodies or our mental bodies, and when we can expand our awareness to more of our soul's perspective, then we can let the, they'll take up less space and we can actually look at them more clearly. What are a couple ways that people can start to really um, bring their emotions more into that higher awareness versus our human awareness? 
Sure. Well, the first thing really comes with acceptance. I use EFT tapping a lot in my work. And, you know, for years I did it without, you know, fully understanding, I think, what the depth of the beginning part of EFT tapping is all about, even though I feel whatever it is, I deeply and completely accept myself. If there isn't some level of acceptance of what you're experiencing, then it's really hard to have any expanded awareness about it um, or allow it to shift. So the first part is really about accepting that you're having this experience, not pushing it away, not judging it, as you mentioned, and just allowing yourself to have that experience. Then as you acknowledge that, you know, tapping is nice because it's actually on the endpoints of the meridians of the body. So it gets out of the mental and the emotional, just the mental and the emotional body. And um, it helps to realign the energy system. I think energy work is really helpful in whatever way uh, it works for you or you feel led to do it. But it, it helps get that expanded perspective and not get so identified with it. So, so let me just breathe into that for a minute. Let me see what I can give as actual um, something that anyone could do right now. You know, I think just really feeling into the emotion, breathing into your heart space, opening to the possibility, because that's sometimes all anyone can lean into, is the possibility that you are so much more than this emotion that you're experiencing. Breathing that into your heart and opening to something greater. Sometimes it's the angel, sometimes it's God, sometimes it's your higher self. It's, it's whatever you can lean into that you feel supported in knowing that you're not alone and that this isn't you. And when you expand your energy field, when you expand your awareness, then you can really look at and feel that emotion coexist without being consumed by it. So is that helpful? Is that helpful? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I mean, that absolutely makes makes sense. And it's, it's really just all about, it's like, like so many times we get so conditioned to want to run away from our emotions. And instead, staying with them, like you're saying, and really giving us giving ourselves the opportunity to feel them um, and feeling into, you know, as you're feeling them, feeling into, like, looking at, okay, well, what do I want to do when this emotion comes up and it doesn't feel so good? You know, maybe you want to run away from it. Um, maybe you want to pretend like it didn't happen. And instead, staying with it and really, you know, and 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 really, like, making sure that you, as you stay with it, it's like you stay focused on it. So it's like, like, it really hurt me when. So, yeah, all of that stuff is really, really um, beautiful. And it really helps, as we release these emotions, it really helps us, bring, you know, move up into a new vibration, move up into a new, um, a new space. You know, as part of that, too, how do our emotions offer us feedback and integration, you know, of ourselves? Well, I think that's kind of what we've been talking about is really just um, noticing how we engage in relationship. And I think just what you said right there, how do I respond? You know, do I want to run away? You know, what what are these habits or the, these conditioning that I have? Noticing them for conditioning or habits or automatic responses versus who we really are as a soul. There's a big difference there. And the more we can become aware of these patterns, like, you know, for, for me, one, you know, I know very well is being a rescuer, you know, trying to, mm-hmm. trying to save people and having that as a, as a kind of go-to response. Well, bringing awareness to that and the emotions that are associated with that, it unplugs me from that habituated response. Yeah, well, and even it's like, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned a little bit around acceptance. So, like, how do we begin to truly, like, accept ourselves and all pieces of ourselves? Well, first is really getting honest um, with ourselves and um, not fight whatever, whatever it is we're experiencing. And 
sometimes if we're having trouble, well, there's lots of layers to this question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where do we want to go with this? At the most basic level, if you're having trouble accepting yourself, it's a leaning into being open to accepting yourself. So sometimes with the tapping, people can't really bring in the full acceptance of themselves, but they usually can lean into being open to accepting yourself, and that is a good place to start. You know, the other layers of acceptance is accepting your greatness, accepting your divinity, accepting all of those expansive layers. Um, that's a whole other layer of acceptance that um, I think is much less talked about. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, um, I mean, I know it's like um, acceptance can be such such an important piece of it as like as we shift and as we just really move to love all pieces of ourselves because, I mean, we do, we just get so, it gets so defined in, um, you know, in the boxes of good and bad, right and wrong, and we tend to kind of want to box ourselves in that way and instead of just recognizing it's all beautiful, it's all amazing, it's all delicious, if we choose to see it that way, right? Everything is a choice. So you are listening to True Talk. I'm your host, Deb Acker. We're going to, go, going to take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to explore more with Kristen. So stay tuned. We will be right back. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Have you ever tried to make lifestyle changes but had difficulty following through? Imagine what it would be like to get up each morning with energy, clarity, and motivation to tackle the day. If you want to get past limiting barriers that are preventing you from living your best life, join holistic health and wellness coach T. Carrie Mitchell each month on The Dr. Pat Show. Or visit Lifestyle120.com today and start to receive the personal attention you deserve. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger 
and the healing epic. We're back on Truth Talk, and for those just tuning in, I'm here talking with Kristen Russell about relationships being the gateway to our soul. And I want to ask you, before the break, we were talking about acceptance, and I want to talk to you about the, the whole idea of acceptance versus discernment and, you know, how we can avoid really being, like, being that doormat and really, you know, step into our truth around acceptance. Yeah, so I, I love that we, we were just bringing this up and talking about how uh, acceptance, you know, is so important, right? We were talking about accepting ourselves completely. We didn't talk too much about accepting others, but that's part of it, too, accepting where others are at, accepting where, you know, our, what our life situation is. Stop, you know, fighting against the parts of ourselves. And yet, at the same time, there can then, if you go down that road of just accepting, 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 and, and that's it, uh, there can sometimes be a propensity to then kind of become a doormat and um, think that, you know, maybe nothing should change. You know, that's kind of an extreme possibility, but it is a possibility that we can start kind of shitting on ourselves, like, oh, you know, I should just accept this person in my life for who they are, well, yes, you know, accept where they are, and yet you have choice how you want to engage with that other person or whatever it may be, and Deb actually was talking about something, if you don't mind sharing, I thought it was a perfect example. Oh, yeah, no, I was talking about how <laughs> Which is I a have... relationship, but it's, <laughs> but it's life, it's the same energy. Yeah, no, absolutely, I was talking about how um, I, like, I... I'm in, I live in Chicago right now, and I am looking – I am going to be moving to California in the next year to two years, and so it's this – for me, it's this acceptance about being where I am and also the knowing of what I'm creating and where I'm desiring to move to, um, and just holding – it's like allowing that tension to be there and holding holding that space, absolutely. Yeah, and accepting – so so there's this, you know – it could be in a relationship, but there's this part of us that maybe wants something to be a little bit different and and being okay with it being a little different, and, uh, being okay with where we are now, and yet also being okay with knowing that another situation, another place to live, another relationship, another circumstance, work, whatever it is, may be more in alignment with us accessing more of ourselves. So accepting that part, too, instead of, oh, I should just live here and be happy, <laughs> or I should just um, be in this relationship and, you know, be happy. Well, maybe, <laughs> but not from a should place, <laughs> but honoring, honoring what you need to show up more fully in this life and in every relationship, and relationships are truly a gateway to becoming more aware of uh, any resistance to that, any blocks to that. And yes, it's all changing. It's all about changing us from within. And it's helpful to have people that support that and life circumstances that support that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and knowing what your I'm not a big fan of the word boundary, <laughs> mm -hmm. but but there is something relevant there. Knowing what is okay for you and what is not okay for you, when you are triggered, it also can show, uh, help un unveil your values. And if something or someone is, you know, uh, crossing your values, then that's important to be aware of. It was funny, I actually had a, uh, situation in the car just a, I don't know, about a little bit before we got on this, and um, I had this person, like, literally cut me off, <laughs> and <laughs> no, just totally cut me off, I was like, whoa, and I felt this jerk, you know, <laughs> like, you, you know, jerk kind of response, and it was interesting because I, I was curious about that, well, why did I have that response? Well, it was very unsafe. It felt very unsafe to me, and so it was pointing to a value of safety and um, probably some 
courteousness. <laughs> but that's what we can do is, is really inquire into, well, what is this really pointing to and what value do I have here that's being uh, out of alignment? And anger is, you know, I think many times we push away anger, we judge anger is a big one. And oftentimes anger is there to show us that something's off. Something is, you know, uh, out of alignment with our values. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, it's funny because somebody at one point told me, and whether this is appropriate in your situation or not, but, like, they're, like, you know, instead of getting mad, they, like, blow a kiss, <laughs> with, like, in traffic and stuff. And so, like, they're, like, oh, if I get cut off, I just blow a kiss, which is, like, an interesting way to, you know, to really, like, choose that love or choose, like, try to choose out of your trigger and choose a higher energy or higher perspective. It may not always work, yeah. but it's, yeah. it is kind of a playful, fun way to sort of um, shift that and sort of move into that. Well, and yeah. we're talking about, you know, emotions and the, and, the, and the body and really listening to ourselves and all, all of those pieces. So how can we learn to listen to ourselves more deeply? Yeah, the body is an amazing way to uh, tune in deeply to the kind of gets beyond that mental body of the thoughts because the thoughts and the, the left brain can be really tricky. It can justify pretty much anything. And so the body can really offer new insights into what's going on. And some of those phrases that we have, like your, you know, your gut instinct or heartache or those kinds of things didn't come around for no reason paying attention to the feelings that we have in our hearts, in our guts, anywhere in our body offers feedback when we're curious about it. Emotions are held in the body. Even mainstream doctors say 85% of physical issues have some kind of emotional component to it. So tuning into body, especially when you're having some kind of emotional response or even not being aware of an emotional response, being curious about what is that? What, what if I had to guess what emotion is being stored there? And surprisingly, if you're open, you may be surprised what your body has to communicate with you. So ask it, what are you wanting me to know? It's wanting your attention for something. What emotion is in that state, what am I feeling? And then, you know, open to it and be curious and then bring bring some release to it however you can. And, and Deb, I love how you actually brought up the whole idea of blowing a kiss because we can't always, or I don't know if we can't, but sometimes we're not in the space. <laughs> it's just, you know, get to that place of love instantly. I mean, we can, but sometimes there's, there's reason and purpose for these these arisings to happen. So as we clear them and as we um, shift them and expand our awareness, we are coming back to a place of love and choosing that consciously to experience more love in our bodies, in our emotional bodies and in our mental bodies and having more compassion for ourselves and for others is really what it is coming back to. That is the gateway to the soul that is, uh, realigning ourselves is to hold our natural state of love and compassion and joy. Yeah, I know that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, and for those who are new to clearing, what is that? You know, we're going to actually do one after the break. But what is that? What does that look like when you when you work with someone and do clearing work? You know, it's so intuitive. It there's not a, a magic. Uh, formula that I have. Like I said, the tapping is very helpful for that, something that anyone can do really easily to help shift energy and, and release stuff that's no longer needed. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm curious, how would you, how would you describe it? <laughs> um, I mean, for me, like, so the work that I do um, with all of my clients um, and the work, and the work that really for me I've seen shift people into higher levels of energy or higher vibrations is really moving them out of lower levels um, of energy or emotions like anger, fear, guilt, shame, control, and moving them up into, uh, you know, like you were talking about love, uh, peace, joy, gratitude. And I feel like I connect someone to the light because I really do feel like the light is the um, – 
is our truth, right? It is like mm-hmm. the truth of who we truly are if we're if we're connected and we're you know we're centered and we're in in our own truth, right? So I always connect someone to the light to the light because I really do feel too that that helps create the quickest shift. And so um, the way that I do so so basically we'll, we bring light through the body, and then you know we expand that out five feet, ten feet, all the way out to the entire universe. And then from there it's like you know because I, I I do feel like so many of our emotions come from childhood, and those get stored in our body, and then we create um, these moments, these everyday moments from this moment that happened in childhood from an, an inherited truth that we took on from our parents, which wasn't actually our real truth. And so basically what I usually have someone do is just see, you know, see that emotion coming out of the body and breathe in a more positive emotion. And in the process, other things start coming up around, um, you know, head tingling and, you know, emotions come up and things just, when you're, when you hold someone in that big light space, things just shift and they shift really, really quickly. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that is, I mean, it really is about the light and you know, more and more I'm encouraging people to, oh, we're out of time, <laughs> connect with that light within their own heart space. And yeah. That, yeah. Well, and before we take our final break, can you give the listeners your contact information one more time? Sure. It's Illuminated Coaching, I-L-L-U-M-I-N-A-T-E-D, coaching.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Kristen Stoffel, which is a tough one, S-T-O-L-F-O, Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L. Awesome. Awesome. So this is Deb Acker with Truth Talk. We're going to go on a quick break, and when we return, I'm going to share my tidbits of truth, and we'll finish with a vibration activation, which is what I just described. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger. And the healing epic.
we're back on Truth Talk. I am your host, Deb Acker. In today's final segment, I want to talk about relationships and all of the opportunities that they have for us. And I want to do a clearing on some of the things that we talked about in today's show. So really for me, like one of the biggest gifts that I think relationships have to offer is that opportunity to be present and the opportunity to see more of yourself. And as Kristen and I talked about, you know, when we get triggered in those situations, as you start to shift up into higher, higher, higher and higher energies and emotional levels and you start to feel better, those triggers actually can be in its own way because you know you're just you're um, moving up into these higher levels of feeling, those triggers can actually feel good or they can actually feel really, really positive. Initially, we kind of want to avoid them. We kind of don't want to deal with them. We think even looking at them, you know, potentially could kill us. And then all of a sudden, as you move up into these higher and higher emotional levels, things start to shift, things start to change, and all of a sudden you actually – can look forward to those triggers because they do give you that opportunity to see more of yourself. They do give you that opportunity to really um, uh, help you to expand and help you to grow. In addition to that, too, relationships really bring us into more connection and they bring us into more oneness. So many times um, a relationship can be an awesome opportunity to for us to have a mirror reflection of something that we need to shift, something that we need to see in ourselves, something that we need to clear. And so I always like to ask any time when I'm in, um, you know, when something is bringing something up for me, it's like, or when someone shows up for me and I don't like it, it's like, what is this here to show me? Um, I'll give the example, actually. With the, upper, the example that comes up for me today is I received an email this morning. I was asking to teach a class through this one organization, and she had said, oh, um, she asked me ins- instead to blog. And I just was looking at, you know, as as I got this email, what this what that email brought up in me, right? Because there's that there's that piece of feeling rejected or feeling like, oh, quote unquote, I'm not good enough. And so any single every single thing that's happening in our life can be that opportunity to show us more of ourselves, to have us look at, okay, what what how can I expand from what she's telling me? I might not might not like what this person is telling me, but I can still recognize that this is meant to help bring something up in me that I can shift and clear really quickly so that I can actually have a new experience instead of somebody else feeling like they they have to show up for me like that as well. And so with that, I want to close today's show um, with a vibration activation. Um, And just uh, to give you an idea of vibration activation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect you to the light, and I I will walk you through this step by step, but I will connect you to the light, and you're going to bring that light all the way through your entire body. And then you'll, uh, and again, I'll walk you through this step by step, but you'll expand that light out five feet, ten feet, all the way out to the entire universe. Um, And then from there, I might say everywhere you're attached to um, some kind of emotions, you might want to see exhaling that out. And just breathe in truth, breathe in light, breathe in love. You can always choose, choose another positive alternative if it comes to you, and you can always choose light if that resonates for you as well. So with that, go ahead and close your eyes. And if you are driving or operating heavy machinery, do not close your eyes. But for everybody else, go ahead and close your eyes and just planting your feet nice and flat on the floor, and just taking a nice deep breath, just breathing in through your nose, and just filling the belly and the sides of the body, the chest and the legs with air, and just exhaling out nice and slow. And again, just breathing in through your nose and just filling the belly and the sides of the body and the chest and legs with air, and just exhaling out nice and slow. And just connecting to the light, the light that's 300 feet above um, above our heads. We naturally do this when we pray. So just see, sense, or feel that light. And just allowing this liquid light to come down in through your forehead, down past your eyes, so you can really see the truth, down past your nose, down past your ears, so you can really hear the truth, down past your mouth and into your throat, so you can really speak your truth down across your shoulders and into your heart so you can really feel your truth, down into your stomach and into your gut so you can really know and stand and ground in your truth, and down your hips and down your legs and out through your feet so you can really move towards your truth, 
and just connecting into the center of the earth, the center of the earth that feels like mother's love. It's all ooey and gooey and warm and nurturing, and just allowing this liquid light to come back up through your feet, up through your legs, up through your torso, and up through your face. And one more time, just a liquid light shower just coming down through your face, feeling every crevice of your face good, and down your neck, and across your shoulders, and down your back, and down your hips, down your legs, and out through your feet, and back up through your feet, up through your legs, up through your torso, and up through your face. And just expanding that light from above and below, and go ahead and expand that light from the center of the room, just expanding that light into the entire room. And just allowing that to get bigger and bigger and bigger and just expanding out to the entire building and just open expanding and breathing and expanding out bigger and bigger and bigger and out past the entire city that you're in so wherever you are just see that light covering the entire city and just open expanding and breathing out past the entire state or country that you are in and just open expanding and breathing out past the entire um, continent that you are on, so just getting super, super, super big, just open, expanding, and breathing, and out past the entire world, just super, super, super big, just that liquid light just covering the entire world, the whole globe, and now out past the entire globe, out past the entire universe, past all the planets, just see that light getting so, so, so super, super, super big, just open, expanding, and breathing, and open, expanding, and breathing, and everywhere in some way you are attached to um, emotions or attached to your emotions or you get attached to your emotions, just exhaling that out and just breathing in truth, breathing in light, and breathing in love. Breathing in truth, breathing in light, breathing in love. And just everywhere that you're looking outside of yourself for happiness, you're looking outside of yourself for the answers, for value, just exhaling that out and just breathing in truth and filling yourself up with you. Just breathing in truth and filling yourself up with you. And breathing in truth and filling yourself up with you. And everywhere um, you're not seeing the good in the triggers, the good in a relationship, just exhaling that out. And just breathing in truth, breathing in light, and breathing in love, <coughs> and bre breathing in truth, breathing in light, and breathing in love. And everywhere in some way that you're perceiving your emotions as bad, um, and everywhere you might even want to abandon your emotions and just let them be, just exhaling that out and breathing in light, and breathing in love, and breathing in light, and breathing in love, and breathing in light, and breathing in love. And everywhere in some way you don't feel supported, just exhaling that out and just breathing in light and breathing in love and breathing in light and breathing in love. And everywhere in some way you're not um, accepting yourself. You're not accepting yourself. You're not loving yourself. Just exhaling that out and breathing in light and breathing in love and breathing in truth and breathing in light and breathing in love and breathing in truth. And everywhere that you're settling for or accepting less than you deserve, just exhaling that out and just breathing in abundance, breathing in light, breathing in love, and breathing in abundance, breathing in light, breathing in love, and one more time, breathing in abundance, breathing in light, and breathing in love, and just planting your feet nice and firm on the ground and taking a nice deep inhale and exhale and bringing yourself back into the room and just noting that you can always listen to these clearings multiple times because every time you clear, you will move to higher and higher levels of energy, higher and higher levels of vibration, higher and higher um, energy levels. So with that, I want to thank my guest today, Kristen Russell, for sharing such great information. And I want to thank you all for tuning into Truth Talk. I always love hearing from my audience. If you have a comment on the show or would like to introduce yourself, you can send me a note on the contact page of my website at deborahacker.com. And there you can also sign up for my complimentary 30-minute discovery session as well as my free Living in Your Truth guide. And next week on Truth Talk, we'll have Robert Novak, speaking about all the ways we can undo pain, and there are definitely more aspects to it than you think. So uh, come join us next week. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for listening to Truth Talk Radio with your host, Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio every Wednesday at 3 Pacific Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com and experience the truth of who you are and who you came here to be each week. Deb interviews an inspiring guest and illuminates the truth to a wide range of topics, including love, life, purpose, career, consciousness, and abundance. 
Welcome to the world of infinite possibilities. For more information about Deb, including how to contact or work with her, visit truthtalkradioshow.com. Look forward to seeing you next week for more Truth Talk Radio.